Welcome to New York Empire Baseball Online Training Hustle at Home. This is our last training for the spring, right? We have something special coming your way. We recorded two videos for you guys to continue to train with us because this is our transition week, right? We're going to be moving from in-home, on, on video with you to now getting out onto the field, right? We're going to be starting up lessons. We're going to be starting up small group training. We're going to be starting up camps, and we're going to be where you are. So we're going to be in New York City. We're going to be on Long Island. We're going to be in New Jersey, and we're going to be in Connecticut. I want you guys to keep an eye out for a hustle at home summer schedule. And I want you to contact us if you'd love for us to come to you and train. Guys, we're, we've, we're super proud with all of the production, all of the growth that we've seen over the past three months with you guys. And we want it to just to continue, right? We're excited to see you out on the field, but we're excited for you to have this training and be able to now continue to build your skills that you've developed over the past couple of months. Cause it has been amazing to see how much you all have grown. So let's keep it up, right? Let's keep it up in the time until we see you guys. And then we're going to start this thing up, guys. So Coach Chris, he's got your fielding. He's going to be going over everything that we've done in fielding. Coach Chris has got your hitting. And, of course, we're going to work out at the end, guys. So let's get this thing started. We're going to start off with our warm-up. We're going to go high knees. All right, I want to see those arms pump and do it with me. Let's go. Good, let's go butt kicks, butt kicks, get the arms pumping. We're gonna go toy soldiers, keeping those legs straight, kick up as high as you can. Coach, I think I missed the arena already. Oh yeah, for sure. One day wasn't enough. No. You know what was missing never is. is these guys at the arena. Yeah, a thousand percent. It's it's We're not really an arena without the players. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Guys, we're going to go power skips. We're going to start off in our march. I'm going to lift my left leg up, my right arm up, and I'm going to switch. Now let's start to jump. Awesome. Let's get into our side shuffles. Knees are bent. Toes are forward. Chest is down. We're going to shuffle side to side. Let's go. Just do it, guys. Bend your knees. Make sure those knees are low. Good. All right, guys, you know the deal. If you're outside, I want you to run some sprints. If you're inside like me, we got jump rope together. Let's go. Make sure you're breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Good. Awesome. All right, we got arms. Let's hit it right now. Hands together, thumbs up, push them hard. Now push them harder. Thumbs down. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Spiders, push. Roll them back. Roll them forward. Back and forward. We got fastball. Squeeze your elbows, forearms, and hands. Remember, our arms aren't against our body. They're up in an L. Curveballs. Let me sit back to your hands. Change-ups. Shark fins, hands on your head. Push them hard on three, guys. Loud as you possibly can. Get that energy up. Let's go. One, two, three. Hoo, hoo. Saws. Love it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Move those arms. Palms up. Palms down. Elbows into your gut. Make the pizza. Flip it over. Good. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Guys, put your throwing hand up in the air. Put it in front of your face. Give yourself a high five. Lock your fingers and pull. Pull it hard. Push. Pull. Push. Keep pushing small circles forward. Small back. Swim forward. Swim back. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Shake it out, shake it out. Last one right here. Arms are straight. Thumbs are up. We got small circles. Let's make sure we keep our hands in front of our body. If you watch me, hands are going to stay in front of my body. Let's go medium circles. Now let's go large circles. Good. Large back. Same thing. Hands in front of your body, Empire. Medium back. And small back. Empire, bring it in. Guys, awesome, awesome job with your warm-up. 
I'm going to pass you guys over to Coach Chris. He's got fielding. I'll see you in a little bit for hitting. All right, everyone. What is going on? Happy to see everyone. Well, not virtually at least. And I hope you guys are enjoying these classes that we're having. We are going to get into two of our fielding things that we've – fielding drills that we've been doing pretty much for the whole year, right, or for at least the whole spring season. And uh, we're going to start off with some ground balls. Then we're going to work our way into some stepping catch, all right, Empire? So things that you can do right now, right? Don't be afraid if you need to, to pause the video. Do a couple of, like, ten – do ten of these, ten of the next one, ten of the next one. Don't be afraid to do that. Trust me, we're not going anywhere. All right, Empire. So first thing, we want to always make sure we're doing our number one thing, which is called pop and flop, right? We all know what pop and flop is by now if you have been on it. But if this is your first time watching these videos, I'm going to show you anyway. So pop and flop is what is the position we get into when we're ready to get on the field. When we're on the field, ready to make any play, line drive, ground ball, pop up. If you don't know what any of those things mean, don't worry about it. It's just the position we get into while we're on the field ready to receive the baseball. So what I'm going to do is clap my hands pop my, or pop my glove open if I have my glove on right now. And I'm going to take one step, two step, bend my knees and flap my hands just like this. All right, Empire? I want you to do that one more time with me, all right? So clapping my hands, one step, two step, bending my knees, bringing my butt a little low and flapping my hands, all right? So Max Miller, make sure you're bending your knees, okay, dude? So what I'm going to do now is – is that now I'm going to receive a ground ball, right? So if I, I don't have mom or dad, brother, sister, whoever throwing it to me, right? What I'm going to do is use the wall. And I'm going to show you other ways what you can do to just work on your ground balls. So I'm going to pop and flop facing my wall right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll the ball off the wall. And I'm going to drop down, bend my knees, bring my butt low, making sure my wrist is back and my fingertips are pointing down to the ground, all right? I don't want to catch like this, like a mousetrap. I want to make sure my hand is here, and I want to try to receive the ball into my fingertips to catch it just like this. If I'm wearing a glove, do the same exact thing. Wrist is back. Your tip of the glove is on the floor. I want to receive it in, like, the web of the glove. All right, Empire. So let's do that again. We're going to pop and flop. My knees are bent. My butt is slightly down. I'm going to roll the ball off the wall. I'm bending my knees, dropping down. My fingertips are down, my wrist is back, and it's gonna make my life so much easier to get this ground ball, all right? So practice this, practice this, practice this. Because trust me, if depending if we're five, 14, it does not matter, you're gonna receive a ground ball somewhere, somehow on the field. It's most likely going to happen, all right, umpire? So keep practicing that, do that all the time. And it could be a lot of fun. You could change hops. You could do different things. We're going to show you how to do a backhand in a few seconds, which that could be a little bit more fun as well. If you don't have a wall, mom and dad's not there. You're outside. You're doing Kirshner and got kicked out, and you have to play in the, underneath the house, right? All of those things is okay. You could use the floor, if you, especially if you have a tennis ball, something that's a little bouncy, right? All I have to do right now is pop and flop. I'm just going to drop the ball on the floor, and receive the ground ball. I'm just going to drop the ball on the floor. Oh, coach missed it. See, it's okay. We're just going to try it again. Pop and flop, bounce the ball, and receive the ground ball. If you are going to bounce the ball, make sure you do it with your bare hand and not your glove because that's more realistic, all right? You're going to be able to focus on the movement with your hand. With the glove, it will be a little bit harder to receive the ground ball the way you want it, okay? So make sure you do it bare hand. Now, if we want to start working on backhands, backhands, it's kind of similar to how we take regular ground balls, but now all we're going to do is flip my hand over to the back of my hand, okay? So what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit, especially if I'm using a wall, if I'm in close proximity to it, close distance to it. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to turn my body. I'm going to bend my knees down, bringing my butt a little down to the ground, right? And I'm going to get into this position. So my fingertips down, my wrist is back, my elbow is back. And I'm just going to toss the ball off the wall to receive it. All right, Empire, I'm not going to do anything crazy, right? I'm not throwing it hard. I'm throwing it nice and easy off the wall so I can really focus on my positioning. That's what this is all about, focusing on movement and how your body is positioned. All right, Empire? And after you get these movements down, you could get crazy and add a little something. We call this right-left throw or left-right throw. These are the two steps you take when you want to throw the ball somewhere. 
So a lot of times when I get a ground ball, most of the time I'm throwing the ball to first base. If Caleb's pitching, there's probably a runner on first and second, and then I can make my moves somehow, somehow differently. But for right now, I'm just going to focus on trying to throw the ball to first base. So if I receive the ground ball, whether it's my back end, whether it's here, if I'm a righty, I'm going to take a small step with my throwing foot and then a longer step with my glove foot, and then I'm going to throw the baseball. If I'm a lefty, same thing. Small step with my throwing foot, larger step with my glove foot. Make sure you're not taking too wide of a step because you don't want to do a split and throw. That doesn't make sense, and it sounds really uncomfortable. All right, Empire? So I receive the ground ball, all right? Right foot, left foot, and I throw. All right? So that's it for your ground balls right now. All right? I want you guys to practice, practice, practice this, right? Because when we get on the field, you guys are going to feel really confident, and that's what this is about. Feeling confident, feeling ready to take any ground ball. All right? So now if you need to, grab a sip of water. We're going to get into some catching. Catching is also extremely important in baseball because there, there can't be a play that's happening without catching, right? It's probably one of the most pivotal things in baseball. So we're really going to focus on this, and I really want you to focus on the movement of your glove and what your body's doing. So again, you could get into that pop and flop position, right? So I'm popped and flop. What I'm going to do is I want to do something called step and catch. What do you think you do in that? You step and you catch. You're going to step with your glove foot. So if you're a righty, you're stepping with your left foot. If you're a lefty, you're stepping with your right foot. Okay, Empire? All right. So let's do it. So I step with my glove foot going towards the baseball. So if the baseball is there, 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 right? I want to step towards the baseball no matter what, not at the person that's throwing to me. Okay? So I step. I'm going to bend my knees a little bit. My fingertips are up to the sky. My wrist is back, and I'm going to squeeze. I'm not going to squeeze and throw my hand down. I'm not going to squeeze and twist my glove around. I'm not doing any of those things. I'm going to keep those fingertips up in something that we call stick it. What does that mean? It's when I catch the baseball, I'm squeezing it hard and still showing it to the person that throw it to me or showing it to the wall. All right, Empire? So if we wanted to practice this, this is regular mom, dad. You're playing catch with brother, sister yourself, the wall, right? This is regular stuff that you're going to be doing all the time because everyone likes a nice catch now again. So I'm stepping right with my glove foot. My toes are pointed to the baseball, my fingertips up, and I am squeezing. All right, Empire? So you want to practice that, practice that, practice that. But, get, but coach, what happens if the person throws it to my left and throws it to my right? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to show you how to do that too. I'm going to be stepping towards the baseball like I just said. My toes are pointed. And I'm going to still <clears throat> have my fingertips up and ready to squeeze that baseball. All right, Empire? Even if the ball is over there, if the ball is really far away from me and, like, someone threw a, a bad throw, that's okay. Move your feet. Don't let your feet be stuck to ground. Run to that baseball. Move as fast as you can. But if it's in your proximity, step and catch. If the ball's across my body, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm pop the flop. I'm stepping with this glove foot, my toes are facing the baseball. My hand is slightly turning kind of towards where the person threw it, right? My wrist is back, and I'm squeezing again. Now, this is where things get a little complicated, the low throw. The low throw is really difficult unless you practice this, all right, Empire? So a low throw, you want to try to catch inside your glove foot. So what does that mean? If this is my glove foot right here, and the ball is over here. I want to make sure I'm stepping and catching inside of my leg here. I don't want to catch outside of my leg. All right, Max? So inside of my leg. All right, Empire? That's what we really want to try to focus on. But there's also an awkward moment. Awkward moment, I like to call it, is when it's around the belly button belt area. All right? So it's hard to catch the ball here because you're kind of, I, I don't want to say it, but you're kind of handcuffed, right? You're not really sure what to do. It's kind of high, but it's kind of low at the same time. There's something you can do there. Just drop your back knee, right? Bend your front knee. Call this the Max Miller Special, right? Getting my fingertips high and squeezing the ball. All right, Empire? That's only if it's around the belt, belly button area. But if it's below, it's around your knee, your ankle. You don't want to catch the ball like this because your glove's facing the ground, right? That's going to be really hard to catch. So I'm stepping, bending my knees dropping my wrist back, my fingertips down, kind of like getting your ground ball, and I'm going to catch it, all right? Or at least I'm going to try to catch it. If you miss it, you miss it. It's part of the game. You can't catch everything all the time, all right? But it's about practicing the movement, all right, Empire? It's all about practicing. So 
if any of these things you find hard with, find difficulty with, right? You could always come back to this video. You could always come see my beautiful face, Coach Chris, right? And you could just step towards the ball, right? Look at my movement. I don't care about catching right now. I care about making sure my glove, my hand is in the correct position. I care about me just going for it, right? And the better we get, the better movers we become, the more confident we're going to feel on the field and the more plays we are going to make. All right, Empire, I know you're doing an awesome job. I know you paused this video like six times to keep practicing it. I love it. Now, what I want you to do is grab another sip of water, get your towel, get your bat, because right now you're going to get into some hitting with Coach Chris, and I know it's going to be great. Awesome job, Empire, and I'll see you soon. Guys, awesome, awesome job with your fielding. I love what Coach Chris just said, and we've said it for so long over the past couple of months, and truthfully while we're at the arena, but I think in this time, where we can only focus on movement, we've seen so much improvement, right? Focus on how I do things. Focus on the steps that I need to take, not the outcome that we're looking for, right? I'm not trying to just catch the ball. I'm not trying to just hit the ball. How do I go do that, right? How, what are the things I need to do to accomplish that, right? We understand you want to get a hit. We understand you want to hit a home run, but think about what's going to produce that swing, what's going to make that swing allow you to do that, right? So we're going to dive into our hitting, guys. Like we've always done, we're going to break it up into pieces, right? I want to break this all up into pieces. We went over this in our last video, but we're going to get a little bit more advanced now, right? We're going to get a little bit more advanced now. And I think that the, the foundation that we've built over the past couple of months has been amazing. And I want you to continue to run with that, guys. So right now, we're going to start off with our loads, right? We're going to start off with our loads, but I want you to think about this in a little bit more advanced way, right? So Yesterday, we talked about getting our weight forward, right? We talked about getting our weight forward, right? Our head and belly button moving forward towards the pitcher. But I want you to think, how can I be more powerful with that, right? So I want, when we're in our load, right? I'm in my stance, right? I'm, I'm in my stance now, right? I want you to think, how do I get more weight moving in the right direction, right? So when I go to take my step or I lift my foot, like my man Garrick does, he takes that big leg kick. Or maybe you just step forward in your load. Right, I want you to think, push your back heel into the floor. Right, I'm, I'm lifting my foot and I'm pushing the ground because the harder I push the ground, the more energy or force I can create, which then will be transferred into my back. Right, so when I push the floor, I want to push my heel into the floor and I'm just going to fall forward. And when I say fall forward, I mean fall forward, not take a step, not lunge forward. Right, because if you see when I really kind of jump forward, my chest, my head goes forward. We don't want that. Remember what we talked about in our last video. My head and belly button are going to stay in the center of my body. Yes, they're going to move forward, but they're going to remain in the center of my body. So, all right, I want you to think, push and fall forward. And if you see, both of my knees are bent. Max, I hope you're listening. Both of the knees are bent. Our head and belly button are right in the center of our body, and we're not leaning forward at all. All right, guys, so this is going to be our lower half load, right? What am I doing with my legs? There's got to be a lot of focus there, right? We talked about it over, over the whole time together. If you can get to a consistent spot, we can now start to talk about the next parts of our swing. But if one time you step like this and another time you step like this, it's going to be hard to talk about how we actually swing the bat because you don't start the same way, right? So this may seem very simple, and I hope it does because that means you've been practicing and it's making sense. That's a good thing. We want consistency here, okay? So focus here, all right? We're going to push and fall forward. I'm going to get both of my knees bent. I'm in a strong position here. Now we can start to add what do I do with my upper body? What's going to prepare me to swing really hard with my upper body, right? So when I, when I go to take that step, I want to pull, pull my elbow back. But well, we're just going to think about this in, in one section, right? I'm just going to break off my upper body. So you can spread your feet out, right? Like you're already in that lower half load. And I want you to think about the saws that we do, right? This is the easiest way I think someone could teach me this, right? So I want you to think about it super simple, right? We do saws every day to warm up. But if you watch what's happening, my elbow's going behind my back, right? My elbow goes behind my back. Now I want you to think, where do I hold my back, right? Well, coach, I hold my bat up here. Great, now do a saw right? Pull your elbow back like you're doing a saw. See what happens now? My elbow goes behind my back. You should start to feel a little bit of tightness or contraction, right? Your muscles are squeezing 
in the top of your back, which is actually called your scap, right? So we're looking to load that area, right? So think back to the saw. Now, where do you hold your bat, right? Your hand's up almost by your shoulder. I'm just going to almost pull my hand closer to my shoulder, which is going to bring my elbow behind my back. Now you're probably thinking like, all right, coach, I, pulled, I got that. That's cool. When do I do it? Right? So the best time to do this, right? When I go, when I go to take my, my step forward and I fall forward, when my foot's hitting the floor, meaning my front foot, when that goes to hit the floor, I want to pull back on that elbow. So watch me. I'm going to fall forward and pull back. Right? I'm going to fall forward and pull back. So right when this foot is hitting the ground, I'm going to pull back. Right? And the timing is important on that. I've watched some of you over time do this, land, and then pull. Right? We want to step. Once that foot's about to hit, I'm going to pull back. Right? We talked about it in the last video as well. If you've ever shot a rubber band, if you've ever shot a rubber band, you pull it back really, really hard, and then you launch it. Right? The further you pull that thing back, the further it goes, right? You create that tension and it snaps and it takes off. But if you were to pull a rubber band and kind of let it back a little bit and then go, I wouldn't go that fast, right? So I want you to think of your body as a rubber band, right? So when I take my step and I pull, right? My body's almost acting as a rubber band. So when I do go to spin and swing, I'm gonna swing even harder, right? I'm gonna be able to swing the bat even harder. And that's what we're all looking for, guys. The harder we swing a bat, the harder you hit a baseball and the harder you hit a baseball. I don't know about you, but the more happy I am, right? So let's dive into the next piece, right? So now we got the load part. We did our step. We loaded our upper body. Now I'm going to start to spin, right? The engine of my swing, right? So I'm going to take my step. Now I want to think, how can I get my belly button belt buckle to the pitcher's hat, right? Or to, or to the pitcher, right? I have my empire pants on right now. I can think about getting my empire sign to the pitcher. Right, I'm gonna go spin and get my empire sign to the pitcher. You guys can think, I almost have a bat to my back hip. What do I mean by that, right? So if, I, if you're the pitcher right now, if I had a baseball bat attached to my hip, how would I go hit a ball, right? How can I hit a baseball with my back hip? Well, I'm gonna have to turn it, right? So I'm gonna have to spin my hip towards the ball, right? But a little bit more advanced way to think of this now, right? I'm gonna move both of my hips though, right? So watch this. My man, Miles, I hope you're listening. I remember we worked on this a ton, right? We want to make sure that we pull this hip back and this one goes forward. So watch me. I'm in that load position, right? Easy way to do this. We're just going to spread our feet apart. I'm in the loaded position. And I'm just going to think about going to spin my hip. I'm trying to bring my back pocket or my back hip to the pitcher and my front hip almost back to the couch, right? So watch. I'm going to spin them both, right? And if you see I'm spinning them both, I'm going to face you. You're going to see that my belt buckle or belly button is now facing the camera, which would be the pitcher. Right? So I want you to do 10 of these with me, okay? So we got our feet spread apart. Make sure extremely important that our knees are bent, right? Remember how we land in our load, right? The knees are bent here. It's going to allow for my hips to move a little bit more freely. I'm going to be in more of an athletic position. I can fire a little faster out of that position. The faster I move the hips, you know it, the faster we swing. So let's do it together, right? My knees are bent. And I'm just going to go spin my hips. All right, I'm going to go spin my hips. I'm going to bring my back hip to the pitcher. And I'm going to pull that front hip back. Boom. Right? Another important thing to think about, right? We talked about having weight through the floor of our heel on our back foot. Now, I talked, this is a little bit more advanced. If you ever jumped on our Tuesday and Thursday pitch and hit class, you might have heard me say this often. Think about getting weight from your heel to your other heel. What do you mean by that, coach? Right? So I create the energy through my back heel. Now when I go to spin, I got all of that energy in my front heel. Right? So when I go to spin and swing, all of that's now in this part of my foot, and I can now turn the hips as hard as I can, which then is going to move into the ball. All right? So you got to think, got to have my whole foot on the floor, and I'm going to turn my hips. Let's do a couple more of those together. Do you see my, my legs are going from bent to my front leg is now straight, it's strong, it's firm, right? I could spin really hard and swing across my chest there. All right, so let's move into this next piece. After that, you've, you've done your load, you've done your upper half load, you've spin, what is next, right? I gotta swing the bat, right? I have to swing the bat as hard as I can across my chest. Yeah, uh, in our last video, we talked about just ripping that T-shirt across our chest. 
Now we can think about it in a little bit more advanced way, right? You got two, you have two ways to do this, right? I can do this with just my, my one hand, right? So think about the Nike swoosh, right? I want to turn my hand over as fast as I can and almost think about hitting the baseball with my forearm or the side of my hand. So watch me right now, right? I'm going to go hit a baseball. If this was the ball, I want to turn my hand over and be able to hit a baseball just like that. I'm going to start at the top, right? I'm going to start at the top, my hand right by my shoulder. That's where we hold the bat. And I'm going to turn my hand over and go hit a ball, right? So we can go through about 10 of these. Just turn the hand over and go hit a ball. You can even, you can put a chair there. You can do it to your couch. We don't want to do it that hard, right? We want to create the movement, right? How do I hit the ball with the side of my forearm or the side of my hand? All right, just like this. Good. And then next we want to do, what does my front hand do? Well, it's going to do just about the same thing, right? I'm just going to turn this hand over. And how do I go hit the baseball with this part of my hand, this part of my forearm or this part of my hand, the side of my hand, right? Boom, right? Right across my chest, turn my hand over. So if you did this together, it would look like this. Right? Some of you guys have thrown Frisbees with us in the arena. Same exact thing we're looking to accomplish just without the Frisbee. Or we can just do this with the towel. Right? I want to think, how fast can I just swing right across my chest and hit myself in the back? Right? First, you saw the more advanced way to, to break it down in what does each arm do. Or you can just swing that towel right across your chest. So let's do a couple together. I want to see five hard as you possibly can right across your chest. But let's just focus on the upper body, right? So let's spread our feet out so we don't have to step. Towel right on your back and your shoulder. And I'm just going to swing right across my chest as hard as I can. Right? If you see, I'm going right across the chest. And I'm going all the way around to hit myself in the back. One more. Awesome, guys. Now, let's put it all together. Let's put everything we just learned together. So we got our step which is our load, right? The more advanced way to think about it is our load. How do we prepare for the pitch? Then we go spin, right? I go to snap my hips, right? The faster I spin, the harder I swing. And then after that, I got to rip my T-shirt or towel right across my chest. You can start to think, right? You just train like this, create that movement in your swing, right? Turn your hands over and rip right across your chest, right? So let's do this together. I want you to face the camera. Camera's the pitcher. I'm doing this with you. We got 10 swings all out. Right, everything you got, you're on the field, you're on the beach with your buddy, you got to hit a missile over his head. How do you do that? Right, max energy right now, but put that swing together. Step, spin, swing, hard as you possibly can across your chest. Let's go. Good. Make sure when we land, those knees are bent and I spin my legs as fast as I can. If you see, I'm taking my time to reset, getting back in my stance so I can then go give it everything I got. Don't just rush and swing back and forth. All right, take your time to do this. Let me see one more swing, every single thing you got. Put all the energy and the passion that you put into this last three months into this swing and give it everything you got right here, hard as you possibly can. Guys, I'm, I'm super pumped up. I don't, know if, I don't know if you can see it, but I, am, I, I can just imagine how hard you're swinging because I've seen it. Guys, awesome, awesome job with your hitting. You know what time it is. It is time to work out, right? This, this is going to be our last workout of the spring together. I want you to max effort right now. We got two things that we've done a lot of, right? We're going to do our squat jumps, and we're going to do push-ups. But here's the kicker. We're going to do it just like we've been doing over the past couple weeks. We're going to play this as a game, but it's a game against yourself. Right? How many times you can get through these two exercises in one minute? Right? So every single time you go back to this, I want you to beat yourself. Because right? if you continue to beat yourself, you are getting better. All right, guys? So here's your two exercises. We're going to go squat jumps. We're going to do it just like we did with Coach Chris before. Right? We're going to go back into our pop and flop position. So I want your feet apart. I want your knees bent. And we're going to get our fingertip on the floor like it's our glove. And we're going to jump. Right? So we're going to go down and jump. But I want you to reset each time. So make sure those feet are apart. Down and jump. When I'm squatting, my chest is up, my knees are down, or my knees are bent, and my butt is down. You see from the side, I'm just like this. Right? Like I'm going to go feel the ground ball, 
and explode up from there. Next exercise, we have our push-up. We've done a lot of these together, right? So I'm going to get in that push-up position. My body's nice and tight, nice and strong. I'm keeping my, my belly squeezed and my butt squeezed. And I'm going to bring my chest to the floor and push up, all right? We got three squats, three push-ups, back and back and back, back to back for one minute straight. And like I said before, I want to see how many you guys can do, right? You're going to count yourself, right? How many can you do in one minute? Push yourself, max effort right here. I'm going to do some with you right here. Let's start it up in three, two, one. Let's go, let's go. Down and up. Down. Good. Three. Down for our push-ups. And another one. Let's, let's go. go. Guys. Jump. Keep going. You are halfway. Let's go. Push yourself. Push yourself. How many are you going to get? How many are you going to get? Make sure that chest is up during your squats. Make sure we're squeezing our belly, squeezing our butt during our push-ups. Keep going. You got 15 seconds left. How many can you do in 15 seconds? Come on. Push yourself. Coach, I know they're flying right now. They're going hard, Coach. I can see Logan just cranking those push-ups out. Five, four. Three, two, one, and done. Empire, grab a sip of water, bring it in. Guys, amazing, amazing, amazing job, guys. The, the workout today, I can, I can only imagine how hard you went because I watched it over the past three months, right? I said it in our last, our last video with you guys that I, we are super proud of you, right? We can't say it enough, right? I think, truthfully, now I just have so much excitement to get back out on the field with you, right? I can't wait to be standing in front of you on the field, in your backyard, wherever you are, we're going to be, right? So like we said before, this is our transition week. So you have these two videos, continue to train them every day. Tito, I know you'll be on them multiple times a day. Use these to continue to grow your skills, right? We're going to have our lessons. We're going to have our small group training. We're going to have our camps. And we are coming to Long Island. We're going to be in the city, of course. We're going to be in Connecticut. We're going to be in New Jersey. You just need to look out for that hustle at home schedule coming your way. And you need to contact us if you want to train. Because we can't wait to see you guys. We can't wait to. We, we've seen it over the past couple months. But we can't wait to see it in person. Right? We've watched you grow so much. Let's continue to grow together. Right? The hard work, the passion, the love, the energy you poured into this. We, you gave it everything you got, and we are so excited to enjoy the success with you guys and be there to be your biggest fan as you guys continue to grow, right? So I, I, I'm, I'm almost at a loss for words, Coach, of how, how excited I am. So the time we get to see these guys go take their biggest swing they've ever take, take, took in their life out of pure excitement and pure confidence over all of the training you just did over the past couple of months, guys. So you know how this goes. I'm going to pass this over to Coach Chris. He's got this one last hustle, and I want to hear this one go loud, guys. All right, Empire, do the hustle with me. Ready? One, two, three. Hustle. Hard work. Hard work. Hustle. Teamwork. Hustle. Empire. Guys, awesome, awesome job. Uh, like I said before, we are excited. We are proud of you guys. We can't wait to be out in front of you guys, but continue to train, right? Take these videos and run with them. Apply all of the skills that we worked on over the past couple of months and continue to grow them, guys. We're going to be with, we're going to be where you are, right? Wherever you are, you contact us. We're going to come train with you guys, but you can do this, right? You've showed us this, so continue to do it, guys. You should be proud of yourselves. You should be excited to get back out there, and we can't wait to be by your side, guys. So for one last time, guys, I hope you guys have an incredible day, and I know I'm going to see you soon.